Hey everyone and welcome back. Believe it or not, as of recording this video, it's been about a year since I decided to start making small improvements to the lathe to try and get more out of it. Since then, I've been really surprised with what this little lathe can do. Today, I want to quickly do a few upgrades that I've been meaning to get around to doing, just small ones that probably wouldn't warrant a 2-3 minute video, but I still think it's important to make videos about them just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Plus, I'll revisit a few old upgrades that I did last year, and I'll also tear down the lathe, give it a bit of a clean, so it's ready for a year of service. So let's get started. The first new upgrade that I did, which I did just after Christmas, was install a thrust bearing onto the top of the tool post assembly. I've been told this before, but I never got around to doing it. I had been using two washers, but this is a much better way of doing it. The reason that it was explained to me is... You do this because you want to reduce friction between the locking handle and the tool post. The theory is, is that you're wasting a lot of energy in friction between the locking handle and the tool post, using quite a lot of energy to just rub up against those two surfaces. So if you use a thrust washer, you're just going to reduce a lot of that friction, and more of it's going to be used to actually hold the tool post in place. And you know what, the theory is pretty spot on. I can apply a little bit of pressure on the locking handle and the tool post is solidly locked and there's no way I could do that before. The clamping force is a lot higher, the tool post is going to be a lot more rigid so I'm going to be really happy with that. Now on playback I could see that the lathe was moving a fair bit, I couldn't see it in person but it's certainly clear on camera, though it's probably something that I'll have to address in another video. With the first mod done, I'll get started with the teardown. Thankfully with these little lathes, it's pretty simple and straightforward. I'll remove the motor pulley and then the chuck. Next, I'll remove the control box housing. I'm going to re-oil the gear train, so it will need to come off too. To remove the carriage, I'll have to remove the lead screw. And like that, the towel stock and carriage are easily slid off. Next, I need to remove the headstock so I can access the bearings. There are three cap head screws holding the headstock on. There's two cap head screws on the front side, and there's one on the bottom of it, located right where the motor would be. And like that, the headstock lifts right off. And it looks like some chips got in through a small hole, so I'll easily clean that off and I'll probably plug up the hole later on. Now the reason I'm doing this is so I can access the bearings. Strictly speaking, I probably didn't have to remove the headstock, but it does make it a lot easier if I do. Now if you don't remember, about 6 months ago I replaced the stock bearings that the lathe came with, which were deep groove ball bearings, to tapered roller bearings. I did this because the bearings that the lathe came with were really worn out and they were causing a lot of chatter and to be completely frank, those ones really aren't set up for lathe work. Now at the time, I did say I would have to come back to check the bearings in about 6 months time, hence the reason why I'm doing this. The tapered roller bearings aren't sealed and I'd greased them, so I knew I'd have to check up on them to make sure that they were still greased. And whilst a good amount of grease is gone, all the rollers seem to be pretty well lubricated, so they held up quite a lot better than I thought. Even so, I'm going to still clean it up and replace the grease. I'll soak it all in some wax and grease remover, and then I'll repack it with grease. Now 
Last time I did this, I didn't use too much grease when I packed it, so I'm going to use about the same amount as last time. With that done, I'll put it all back together, and that should be the grease done for at least another half year. If it looked a lot worse, I probably would install a grease fitting so I could feed grease to the bearings, but for the moment, it's looking okay, so I won't do that. With the lathe already apart, I also want to clean the gear rack while I can. I can see that it's really caked in with grease and dust from about three years of work, which is not doing anyone any good. I've never taken it apart and I've never cleaned it that well, so I think I should do it now. And seeing as that I've never taken it apart, when I actually got it off, it looks like there's some traces of the Cosmoline grease that the lathe came in, so it's definitely a good idea that I actually took it apart and cleaned it. And you can probably see from this view just how much gunk was actually caked in the rack. And with it all cleaned up, it really looks new. Now while I was putting the headstock back on, I decided to replace the factory cap head screws. These factory ones are 8.8 grade, but I'll swap them out for some 12.9 grade bolts. The difference may be a little bit hard to notice, and it might be a little bit overkill, but these are the bolts that are holding the headstock to the lathe, and $2 worth of cap head screws are an easy upgrade, and I think they're worth it. The next thing that I have planned is to add some button oilers to the lathe. Most big lathes come with them, and a lot of mini lathes come with them as well, but this one didn't. I'll take apart the tail stock and I'll clamp it in the mill. Next, I'll drill a hole near the back. The oil will help lubricate the lead screw that drives the spindle. Now these oilers are a press fit and it simply pushes into the hole. Now even though I'd used the specified drill, for some reason it was slightly oversized, so I had to glue it in place. With that done, the tail stock can now be put back together. The other place where I want to add some oilers is the lead screw plane bearings. It's pretty important that these things be kept oiled, especially if you use them a lot. It's really common for these to have pre-fit oilers, but not on these ones, so I'll have to do it myself. And that's the oilers taken care of. Next, I'll take apart the carriage. I want to quickly check up on the shield that I made a while back to protect the handwheel gears from chips and dust. And I'm happy to see that the gears are pretty clean, which means the chip shield has done its job. So I'll quickly oil it and put the cover back on. The next thing that I want to add is another hole in the cross slide so I can have another grub screw for the gib strip. Doing this should help me get a lot better pressure on the gib strip, which is really essential on this small lathe. I honestly should have done this when I first made the cross slide, but 5 seconds on the mill should fix it. And that's the upgrade finished. I'll now start to put the lathe back together, but I'm not done yet. One thing that I should have done a while back is to adjust the half nut. As you can see, when I lock it, it pulls the lead screw up, and this causes unnecessary load and strain on the lead screw. Now it is a little bit hard to see, but adjusting it is pretty easy. There's a small grub screw on the underside of the carriage, which you move to adjust it. Now I didn't get it perfect, but it's a lot better than it was before. The last thing I need to do on the lathe is put some preload on the bearings.
The final thing that I wanted to do was spray paint the Chuck Kings. Even though that I have a dedicated spot for them, I always seem to be losing them. My go-to way of getting around this is to simply spray paint them red, which makes them a lot easier to spot. And they turned out really nicely. I've learned that colour coding is just really useful. I have red stuff for the lathe, and blue stuff for the mill. The next two mods that I did after this were the spindle lock and the way cover, though those were pretty big projects and I made dedicated videos on that. And that brings us to now. Tearing down the lathe was certainly worth it, not only just to clean the lathe and to re-oil it, but also check up on how some of my mods were doing. Usually there can be a few weeks between me filming and editing and uploading it, so I can always check up on how some of the mods are doing to see how they're going, but it's always nice to check back and see how everything's going, seeing that they're working well after a few months or even half a year of work. On a final note, I did do one upgrade at the same time, but as many things do, it turned into a much bigger project than intended, so I'll make a dedicated video for that. So I guess keep an eye out for that tomorrow, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you tomorrow.